Oh, okay. hey there, so. Hey there, J Real once again, and here we are. J Real rambles. I think this is the what is this the fourth or fifth? I have no clue. Don't have. I mean, I'm talking to the camera. Oh. Uh, I don't know which one it is. But anyway, I'm with Ray Boucher here um, at his uh, abode, and uh, we just watched the movie that I was sent uh, from the Dead Pit guys to do a written review, and it was so inspiring, so breathtakingly. What? How would we do, what would be one word you would use to describe this movie? Shitty. And it's beyond shitty. It, it, it's, there needs to be a new word invented to actually put this in a proper context. Because, I mean, shitty just doesn't really do it justice. There's lots of movies that are shitty. But there's lots of movies that ain't nowhere near uh, the, uh, the, the pinnacle of shittiness. <laughs> <laughs> and complete, but, unbelievably, oh my sweet Jesus... Well, wait, we got to. What are we watching? Here? We got to have. We got to tell the title. The name of the movie is Things. Things. Uh, 1989. 1989, and this is the 19th and a half anniversary edition. I think they know what it's called. Which, yeah, but but it came out in September of 2008, so technically it's probably it was, 20 years old now. Well, okay, yeah, yeah. Well, it comes, yeah, it comes out in 2008. Uh, well, no, it came out in September 2008, yeah. right? Uh, things 198 you can go to www.things1989.com which I think is the only place you can go to get things um, it's a very lavish package with a yeah, big fold, I mean, out, folds and out and it all stars that. Amber Lynn Amber uh, Lynn yeah porn por star former porn star uh, who does not get anywhere near naked in the movie. No, there is a naked woman in the movie. But uh, it's not Amber Lynn. Full frontal uh, female nudity, but she's wearing a devil a mask. Devil. She's wearing a devil's mask, yes. And, uh, and, she, and, she, and she's got a bush thicker than... Uh, well, it's not that thick, but it, it's, 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 that your, thick? it's your 1989 bush, well, you I, know, if, you, if you like the bush. And so there uh, but yeah, things. And how in the world would we even begin to describe this movie? Uh, the, the plot... Uh, there's a man. It, it, is Doug? Is Doug the, the 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 man and the wife? They screw it up on the back describing yeah. the plot. Um, the 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 man and his wife are named Doug and Susan. Doug and Susan. Right? Yeah. And Doug and Susan want to have children. Yes. Well, particularly Doug wants to have children. Now, I don't know if Susan. You don't you don't really hear uh, much from Susan other than a lot of screaming. But um, Doug really wants to have a child, and for some reason. There's something wrong with my semen. Uh, uh, that Doug can't father a child, or maybe there's something wrong with maybe with Susan. You know, she's uh, barren. She's barren. Uh, the, his seed could find no purchase, and, uh, <laughs> and and they can't have kids. So he enlists Doctor Lucas. Doctor Lucas. The aid of Doctor Lucas, who is a uh, twisted. Uh, um, has done apparently does some experiments ultraviolet rays. Well, but, is that it? Yeah, that's and, what, and cutting off people's hands with paper cutters. Yeah, now, Amber Lynn is a news reporter, and she kind of is kind of like the Greek chorus in this movie, where she sort of, you know, uh, moves you along the story a little bit and kind of instructs you on, you know, certain plot points. And this Dr. Lucas apparently has done some experiments with radiation or something, and. Doug thinks that Dr. Lucas is the answer to his problems, and so he has uh, Dr. Lucas do some experiments on his wife Susan, which produces some horrifying results. Basically, a creature, uh, uh, she gives birth to a creature which is very similar to, uh, very few people out there have maybe have seen the movie uh, Deadly Spawn, Return of the Aliens, which is one of my favorite independent movies from the 80s. Yeah. It looks just like one of the Deadly Spawn creatures. Well, his head looks like the Deadly Spawn. Yeah, the, the, the head does. The body looks like a snow crab. Yeah, lots of teeth and, you know. Spider ass. And basically, the rest of the movie uh, is, uh, it's Doug, Don, and... Fred. Fred. Who, who disappears into the third, fourth, and fifth, fifth dimension, dimension through a yeah. nose hole. At, at one point in the movie, uh, he disappears. Well, you know, one thing that we're, we're overlooking here is that, you know, for one thing, the movie is Canadian. Yes, very, and very Canadian. It, it's very Canadian because it was actually shot in Ontario, Canada by, uh, by Canadians. Or, or uh, well, I don't know. Oh, man, that was Toronto. Uh, yeah, well, who gives a shit? It's <laughs> Canada. Six of um, one, half dozen of the other. So, you, you know, you, you got your, you got your, oh, it's, a, it's, it's the hoose. Ooh, let's get the hoose. 
the the mouse hole. <laughs> the you know, everything hole. is, you know, like, where, <laughs> where are we going to go out? Well, and they, they, they drink. They drink copious amounts of alcohol. They're always the drinking beer. And eating cheese sandwiches. And they, yeah, they eat a cheese sandwich. No craft day. dinner. Yeah, no craft dinner, but they eat lots of cheese sandwiches and drink a lot of beer. And 95% of this movie, if not more, percentage of this movie is talking. These characters sitting and talking and drinking beer. And uh, th for a horror movie, it is very, very, very thick with dialogue. And uh, it's just, it was shot on 16 millimeter film. And it's the kind of thing that you would see kind of like in a video production where they've got all the time in the world because video is cheap, you know, so might as well just sit and talk and, you know, just bullshit. Uh, because it's an independent movie, and who cares, you know, and we're just having fun. But this is a 16 millimeter, you know, it's shot in 1989, where, you know, I'd imagine how much film stock cost back then. And it's just a lot of people sitting and talking, or a lot of, a lot of dialogue, not a lot of people, it's just three people in the movie, basically. But uh, Now, l let me interject one thing. In, in one of the extras on the DVD of Things, 1989, there is a Canadian television news report uh, from the year in which they actually say that the budget of the movie was three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Um, I don't know what they spent three hundred and fifty thousand dollars on. If they spent three hundred and fifty thousand dollars making this movie, if they spent three hundred dollars producing <laughs> this box art and the you know the the the, the master that they dub these yeah. copies off with. I will eat a shit sandwich <laughs> on the front steps of the uh, Prime Minister of Canada's well, when, uh, residence. When you, when you look at this damn box, you think maybe that they they you know took some time to really remaster this this movie to to clean it up you know and all that because I've never even heard of it. I, I've never seen it. I've never heard of it. I, I never knew such a movie existed. But from the look of the box, which is pretty well done, it's you know it's pretty well presented. They kind of they fuck up the plot. In describing the plot here, they get characters screwed up. But other than that, it looks like something that, you know, when you actually put in the DVD, you thought, well, it's going to be a low budget production, but it's going to look, you know, fairly as cleaned up as, as possible given today's technology. And it looks like so, it looks like a VHS, a, a umpteenth copy of a VHS dub. Did, did it, any of you guys ever purchase? A VCD of Within the Woods off of eBay. That's what the quality of this movie looks. It, like. it looks just god awful. It's it's just and, and the dub on it. There's a there's a dub, and you can every now and then you can hear the original dub seep through over the the, the new dub. Uh, but there's a dub done over it. I don't know when the new dub was done of the characters talking. I'm sure it was done when it was made. It just it seems like it has to have been. But. It sounds like, you know, when you're a kid and, 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 you know, if you ever got a hold of a VCR where you could maybe do an audio dub over something and you got like an old crappy movie and you thought, oh, I just, you know, do my own voice, you know, and get a couple of friends together and just kind of do, uh, uh, you know, silly voices over it. That's what it sounds like. It's just, you know, that, that like the, there's, there's one scene where uh, Dr. Lucas is removing an eye, someone's eyeball and it's just someone in the microphone going... Did you, you know, do that? Were you yeah. the one that did the, the sound effects for the movie? It's just, it's it, it is like they made no effort to even make it, it, it uh, anything even pro approaching uh, good. It, 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 but you know, but that being said, did we not enjoy watching that movie? I would say seventy five percent of it I enjoyed. And the, the last like, poor, last quarter of it, I started to kind of roll my eyes and was kind of I, I was about to have enough. But about at least 75% of this movie, I was highly entertained by just its... Unintentionally entertained by it. Uh, yeah, well, there's lots of movies like this. Well, it's not a lot of movies like this. No, there's, no. there's lots of movies where you're, that are so bad it's good. I mean, you'll watch it and it's, you, you'll admit, to anyone can admit this is just god-awful, just wretched. But you're still entertained. And, and, but you know, that, my, my, the, the pinnacle for me has always been Splatter Farm. Yeah. The, the original version of Splatter Farm. Which not, is the closest not, that, that I can compare this to. Not, to not the DVD version of Splatter Farm. The original Donna Michelle VHS version of Splatter Farm. Um, you guys out there that like Troll 2, this movie makes Troll 2 look like the curious case of Benjamin Button. Yeah, yeah oh yeah. 
that's how bad this movie is. Now, obviously, if you were under the influence of some kind of alcohol or, you know, God forbid, drugs of some kind, you probably couldn't even wrap your head around this. I mean, I, I've been drinking beer, and but I'm not, you know, shit-faced drunk. This is not Troll 2. No. This is not Splatter Farm. This is bad in a whole new dimension well, it's, of it's, being bad. <laughs> we mentioned it was shot in Canada, and, yeah. and, and, and if you... You know, if you've watched, say, you know, SETV and, and, and you know, the, the Bob and Doug McKenzie, and they're doing very broad stereotypes of Canadians. This movie only reinforces those stereotypes yes. to the to the nth degree. I mean, because the accents in it, the just there's just these bizarre. You, you never hear anybody say bub, but you do hear a couple of guys say a. Yeah, there's a couple of a's in there. And there's a boot, or, or you know, or you the, know. In the mouse hole. Yeah. You know, where's Fred? There, there's a scene where the guy, and let's talk about Doug. Doug you and, and Don hole. yeah, are, are <laughs> walking down the hallway, and blood drips from the ceiling yeah. onto Doug's shirt. And he's like, where's Fred? He must have been sucked into the third, fourth, and fifth dimension through that mouse hole. The mouse hole. And <laughs> the mouse hole. Th then Doug spends the next 15 minutes of the movie without his shirt on. Yeah. Now, you know. I don't know if you guys or, or, or gals, you know, care about watching a guy. I don't, you know, personally, if, if you're watching an action movie like a Rambo or something and the guy's running around without his shirt on, it's just second nature. Oh, it's Rambo. He doesn't have his shirt on. This is like watching Mr. Whipple run around without his shirt on. You know, it's like, watching, it's like watching me run around without my shirt on. And it's like he, he hadn't got a ray of sunlight like me in, in uh, you know, in six years. He's got a little beer gut on him, you know. He's 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 uh, you know uh, doughy and just <laughs> doughy. Yeah, it's it's it he's not he's not a fat guy. He's just it, it's it's like okay. He's like a balding middle aged man <laughs> with glasses. And for some reason, the filmmakers thought this is the guy that should be. Yeah, uh, you know, we'll, we'll have this guy run around for fifteen minutes without a shirt yeah. on. Um, yeah, you know. But 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 just there's there's really spray tan and see even the spray tan doesn't make me as dark <laughs> as I'm supposed to. Be. Oh, you got spray tan? I put a spray tan. Yeah, I put a spray tan. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, anyway, um, <laughs> there are moments and lots of moments. Of, of, like I said, there's a lot of dialogue. Mostly it's mostly dialogue. It's mostly just a couple of guys talking. But. The, 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 there are some bizarre stretches of dialogue where it's just indescribable. You have to see it. The way they say things, the way they'll stretch out a word. What was it he says at one time? There's, there's some word. Here's some, here's some medicine you take for the pain. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it, it, well, i tell you what it is. It's they're, they're, they shot, I guess they shot in 16 millimeter and, and had crappy sound. Yeah. They went back and they dubbed it and they're trying to they're trying to loop all the dialogue without really having a, a I guess a track to follow, yeah. and so you know where is it like if, if you and I were sitting here now in the 16 millimeter version of our movie that we're shooting now, and I were to say to you, Jay, let's go get a hamburger, yeah, and you know Jay, let's go get a hamburger. That that little short bit of dialogue, the syncing doesn't work while you're you know you're Canadian of course, and you sit around and eat a lot of back back bacon and drink beer all day long. <laughs> So you know what do you craft do dinner. with your craft dinner with your your shitty ass money whatever the you know the, the the pence or whatever that English crown shit that you Canadians use. They obviously didn't have a windscreen. Yeah. Uh, so they're talking to the microphone. Jay, let's go get a you know okay now Ray say it like this. Jay, let's go get a hamburger. And then I get confused because I'm I'm, I'm drunk because I've been you know sitting out you know on a thatch all day long drinking drinking you know Elsinore beer. And, and, and watching the, the goddamn peasants. Making a two four. Yeah, and so uh, you know I, I don't get the I don't get the, 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 the cadence of it correctly. So it's Jay, let's go get a hamburger. <laughs> so you know you got to stretch out one syllable in the sentence to make sure that you know the lips actually move up. It's like watching a Japanese movie but with Canadian accents. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, but so it's it, it really it's it's something you. I, I mean I, I guess we're recommending that you see it. I'm recommending you see it. Because, like I say, at least 75% of this movie, I was thoroughly entertained for some strange reason. 
it is absolutely indescribably bad. It is one of the worst movies I've ever seen. But uh, like a lot of movies, uh, that horribleness, that uh, terrible nature of it is almost endearing. And uh, Things is fits in that category. And you know, and the, 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 the thing about Things to me is that, you know, like you said, it is bad. It, it's, it's not one of those movies that's so bad it's good, as everybody says. It's just bad. It's just bad. Yes, yeah, it, it remains bad. And, and it's so bad that it's almost like well, you're compelled to to sit through it because you just you can't understand how something that awful and that painfully dreadful was was ever produced. Well, you, you, even if it was made by Canadians well, in 1989. Yeah, but, but what I guess what gets me the most is, and this was a surprise to me because I didn't see it. You know, you had saw the, the part where they mentioned that they had spent three hundred and fifty thousand dollars on it. Yeah. You. I have to wonder where in the world did that money go? To yeah. Amber Lynn, maybe? I mean, um, you know, Amber Lynn doesn't get naked. She has this sort of puffy blouse thing that she wears. She's a TV reporter. All she does is just stand in front of a, a couple of monitors. Amber and, Lynn's dog's ass in this movie. And yeah, and, 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 and dog's ass being something to cut away to in, in, in filmmaking terminology. But, uh, uh, what was it, Robert Rodriguez brought up the dog's ass? Was that, yes. he, he, he's the, uh, yeah. Yeah. But, but anyway. And the thing about Amber Lynn is, every time she's talking, she's kind of looking off to the side. Her eyes are like drifting off this way. And it's like, I don't know if she's reading from a monitor. Reading a cue card or something. I, yeah, but it, I guess it's over here because, you know, she's reading off in this direction. And her eyes keep drifting off as, she, as she's reading. Um, and here's, a, here's another thing about the box art that you probably, you, you, of course, you can't see this on the, the camera. But if you look at the picture on the front and you, you see our, our you know chubby Canadian lead with the, the drill, for one thing, he, he's got like the slumber party massacre driller killer drill. That's not what he has in the movie. He's got like a you know it's a, just a, a four inch bit, yeah. and it's got that it's electrical drill. Well, it's uh, one of those things where you drill holes. Yeah, like a yeah. like a hole saw kind yeah, of. Yeah, hole saw. And uh, on on the inside, on the outside of the cover, he's sans mustache. On the inside, he's got a mustache. So you know, even though he's wearing the same <laughs> clothes. On the inside, he's got a mustache. On the outside, he doesn't. He has a mustache in the movie. Now, there's a there's a picture of Amber Lynn with her ass exposed, crawling over the thing's logo. Yeah. This is not in the movie. No, no, she's nowhere Amber near. Amber Lynn's the... in the movie, but she's she's you, she's she's more fully dressed than Jay is right now. <laughs> you get your full frontal in the beginning, and early in the movie, and and it's a girl who, according to a a, a, a retrospective, or what was it like a, a reunion, reunion video? Yeah, yeah a reunion video. It was a girl who agreed to be fully naked, but she didn't want her face. It was a hooker. Thing. Yeah, she didn't want her, well, she didn't look. It was a hooker. She was a hooker. It was a hooker they picked up on J Street or whatever those. Hey, they don't even have, you know, decent Canadian hookers. <laughs> Ran it. You know, she was wearing a devil mask, but, you know, from the neck down, you know, hey. She didn't want her face seen, so she wears a devil mask, and how that part of the movie even fits into any of this, I have no idea. It does. I mean... And, you know, another thing about the box art is this, this creature, which they call Irving, you yeah. know, one of the deadly spawn snow crabs. And there's several of them in the movie. Yeah. And this, this woman's leg and foot, this woman's leg and foot, it, this is not in the movie. As a matter of fact, on the box or in the DVD one or the other, they actually credit the foot model for the box art. <laughs> because this is, not in the, this is not in the movie, this is a shot they did later. And they actually give credit to the to the lady whose leg, you know, so and so's leg on the poster art is, you know, yeah. Sonia McGillicuddy or whatever her name. Is. So, um, but yeah, and you know, the one thing that I hated about the reunion footage was this this guy with a dummy. Yeah, dummy. what the fuck was he on? Tony Molesworth <laughs> and uh, Victoria Elizabeth Turnbull. There's a guy now, with a, a ventriloquist guy with a, with a dummy. With, uh, and he's a fucking hippie dummy. Yeah. He's got long hair and a headband. And he's there, I guess, as a, uh, what, what do you call it, a, 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 what do you call it, like in commentaries and stuff, where they have someone that's there. Like a to, moderator? Moderator. He's kind of like a moderator for this reunion. But he's completely useless. You know, and so and, is the young chick. She's like, you know, I almost caught AIDS watching this movie. <laughs> Now, <laughs> she's just a despicable bitch. You shouldn't have said now, that, eh? <laughs> yeah. Now, that, that's one thing I'll say. If you watch the reunion footage, the the, 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 the chubby guy, what's his name, something, uh, Barry J. Gillis, he's like, well, you shouldn't say that, eh? Yeah, you, know, you shouldn't it, say it, that, is, eh? She, she's, we're venomous about, you know, how bad this movie is, 
but she was just downright hateful about how bad it was. <laughs> And of course, you know, how, what do you think? You know, you made this movie 20 years ago. It, it achieved, 19 and a half. Well, it's, I guess it's 20 years now. Achieved some kind of cult status in Canada, which, you know, <laughs> you know, what, what do you, what do you have to do to achieve cult status in Canada? I ate about seven pounds of cheese sandwich one day, eh? I'm, I'm a legend. I'm in the, I'm in the Canadian Book of World Records, eh? I'm, I'm famous. You know, you don't have to do a whole hell of a lot in Canada to get, you know, get, get cold status. Your funeral doesn't have to be at the fucking Staples Center to be a, a you know, a, be a celebrity in Canada. But these guys were there on the show and they were trying. And what do they do? They come in after 20 years and they've got a, they've got an uptight bitch, um, and a, and a, a fucking gay wad with a goddamn ventriloquist dummy in her funeral. Yeah, who's this? I'd have, I'd have flung shit in the camera lens if I were He barely guys. says anything. He's just, he's just there with his damn doll and, and uh, oh, Makes man. That was a tree mm -hmm. 20 years ago. And yeah. like one of the extras in there is, is what's it called, Fun with Echo? And yeah. it's, and it's someone who's I am a demon or I am death yeah. or what? Well, you know, and, and let, let me just say dip, this. Dip, 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 dip. If, there's, if there's one thing that I hate more than Canadian filmmakers, it's fucking ventriloquists. <laughs> So that being said, let me just give a thumbs up to things and to my Canadian brothers who made the film. It may sound like I hate it, but I really don't. I actually told Jay I love when it was SCTV. over. I, I told Jay when it was over, I said, I'll give you twenty dollars for that DVD. <laughs> and and, and I, you know, you, you may not want to spend twenty dollars on it. I don't know how much they want for it. But, but, uh, but you can get it yes. at www.things1989.com. At least you could up until September uh, 4th, 2008, which, which is when it was uh, released, apparently. So go to things1989.com and see if you... That's the only place I know of you can get a copy of Things. Um, Canada has finally given us something to be more embarrassed about than Anne Murray. <laughs> Yeah, like, like, like Ray said, this is beyond Troll 2, it's beyond Splatter Farm, it's beyond any of those movies that are cult, you know... Ed Wood's so movies look terrible. like Oscar winners. Yeah, but Ed Wood is, is it actually, it's got some sort of uh, skill to it, it you know, it, uh, oh, yeah, it, it... But I liked it. Yeah, I did too. For the most part, I liked it. Uh, it, it, it um... We, we we can't say enough bad things about this movie. I've never but seen, we liked it. <laughs> I've never seen anything, anything quite like it. And like I say, when, when you see the, all the you know stereotypical things of, uh, of uh, Canadians, you know a lot of it was done. You know, Bob and Ned McKenzie is is probably the the most prominent as far as you know really uh, uh, you know you know take off a uh, you know stereotypes about Canadians and drinking beer and eating back bacon and whatever. This movie is like it, it just reinforces all those stereotypes. This, this is this this does for Canadians what Amos and Andy used to do for yeah, African Americans. It, it really it, it, it really knocks them back about uh, you know 30, 40 years as far any advances Canadians may have made. I don't know if they made any, but any advances they may have made, things will knock it knock it way back. Uh, so yeah, pick up a copy of things uh, things. 1989.com. Please do. And uh, have a cheese sandwich, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Two, four, eh? Back bacon, eh? Um, get, out, get out of the house. Yeah. The middle, so he disappeared. And that's one of the lines, I, like I said. He went into the third, fourth, and fifth dimension in through the, the middle hole. And I'm like, <laughs> what the fuck did he do? Did he say that, that, that Fred went through the third, fourth, and fifth dimension in the mouse hole? And it's just right off the top of his head. It's just like, and that's what he assumes automatically. This guy gets, you know, a. Uh, 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 Blood pouring down on his shoulder, and this the, the other guys just disappeared. So that's what the automatic assumption is: is that he's disappeared into the third, fourth, and was it second or you know, third, third, fourth, and fifth, fifth dimension. dimension? And if for some reason you don't have yeah, internet so. access and, and you can't actually get a copy of things, do a, a copious amount of LSD, <laughs> get a video camera, and make your own movie, and you'll probably yeah. wind up with something like this. Yeah. So there unless you you're not Canadian. Things. Things. So there you go. Uh, uh, it says here a movie that defines what cult really is. Well, I, I think don't know it's about that. A movie that defines what shit really is. Maybe <laughs> that was just a typo on the box. Um, uh, let, let's see. That there was a, a review of it. What do you do? What's the line? <laughs> and we just keep going on. With it. Yeah. Well, but, you I, know, I, actually, I, I, I can edit. Like I said, I like. It. <laughs> I enjoyed it. I can edit. Um, but yeah, they're they're. Uh, 
don't know where the reviews were on it, but uh, okay, yeah. Anyway, get things. Get things. Get things. If I stand up, oh my God, bending my knees. Uh, <laughs> go through the third, fourth, and fifth dimension. Things. Through the moose hole. <laughs> the moose hole. The moose hole. Gravity. Yeah, yeah. Hey, don't do, cut it off yet, eh? We gotta watch. Oh, they're gonna make a sequel. They said it in the DVD commentary. <laughs> make a sequel thing. 